in this stereography projection, now there are uh, several circles that we can draw. For instance, if we have this uh, equatorial plane, as I told you, that equatorial plane is now represented as a big circle. Now, of course, the center of the sphere can be extended at the center of the uh, circle in here as an A point. And if we draw the, the normals to this sphere, north and south can be explained as big lines from here N prime as S prime. And east to west is represented as here uh, as the W prime and uh, E prime. Okay. Now, in, he, in this case, you assume that I have the sphere like watermelon. Then you cut the center of this watermelon uh, through the center of the watermelon. Then if you break it, you can find out the big circle. Right? That's a stereopic projection. And there are different ways that you can cut your watermelon by different angles. Then all these big circles, basically the big circles, is now represented from N prime to S prime as the segment of the big circles like this. Okay? If you rotate your sphere like this, then you projected it, then all this big circle is represented as an angle and these lines coming from N prime to S prime. So in this case, you can draw a set of big circles like this. And, and if any plane which does not pass through the center of this sphere, then it represented the projection represented as another circle, but this is what we call small circle. Right? So there are great circles. And there are small circles in the stereopic projection. And this great circle project as a circular arcs or as a straight lines through the center of the projection. In this case, this n prime, s prime, this is the projection of the big circle. E prime and W prime, this line is the projection of the big circle, of course. You can cut through the equatorial planes. Then that designates as the lines, equatorial lines. And all these uh, lines, which are coming from N prime to S prime, there are a set of lines. That's what we call great circle, because all these lines passing through the center of the sphere. But there are also small circles like this, this project as a circles, but their projected center does not coincide with their center on the projection. Their center does not coincide with the center of these stereopic projections. So in the stereopic projection, you can get the information about the great circles and the small circles. In doing that, here I showed the standard projection of cubic. Uh, this is one example of stereopic projections. And here, 0, 0, 001, you can imagine that this is the sphere. Now uh, we put the cubic objects in the center of here. Okay. Then if you draw 001, 001 is designated as a pole. Now you project it, then this projection passing through, passing through this projection makes the big circle. Of course, this projection makes at the center. And 100, as I showed you here, then this 100 is projected as here, as 100 pole. So this is 001 pole. And if I draw 001, it touches the surface here. Then you projected it. Then it touches in here. That's designated as 010 planes. OK, so there is 100 pole. There is 010 pole. There is 001 pole. And if I draw the other side of the plane, which is 1 bar 0, 0, that is in here. And 0, 1 bar 0 pole is in here. And if you draw 1, 1, 0 planes, then of course 1, 1, 0 plane is here. Then you draw the projection uh, pole, vertical lines of that plane. Then this is 1, 1, 0 pole. And this 1, 1, 0 pole is now projected in these lines in, at this point which is 110 pole. So this is 110 pole. 
And there are a set of big circles. Of course, this is the big circles. If I can measure the angle between 0, 1, 0, 4 and 1, 1, 0, 4, of course, this is 45 degree. And if I measure the angle between 1, 0, 0, 4, 1, 1, 0, 4, and this is 45 degree also. Okay. And if I draw, if you assume that uh, I draw the 1, 1, 1 plane in here, then 1, 1, 1 plane pole so, uh, touches the surface of sphere somewhere at this point. And now, if you projected it, then 1, 1, 1 pole is now from 1, 1, 0, you go to 0, 0, 1. There are certain angles to draw 1, 1, 1 pole. Okay? So that pole is now designated in here. Okay? So if you draw some big circles, part of the lines in here, then you can measure the angle between the uh, 0, 0, 1 pole and 1, 1, 1 pole from these stereopic projections. So in this circle, in this two-dimensional circle, all the pole is now designated by the way of drawing pole and project those poles to the two-dimensional planes. So that's what we call standard projection, stereo projection. All right, so well, let's, let me explain to you one more thing. From one, uh, 0, 0, 1 pole and 1, 0, 0 pole, if you move about 45 degrees from these lines, then there is 1, 0, 1 pole in here. Of course, this angle is 45 degree, and this angle is 45 degree. So if you're looking at any uh, crystallographic uh, textbooks, then there are these uh, stereo projections. And now you understand what this stereo projection of certain crystal system means. All right, once this stereo projection is given, uh, there is an easy way to manipulate the information which is on the stereo projections. And that is by the ULFNET. This ULFNET is basically drawn that uh, there is, of course, big circles in here. This is stereo projections. And there is a center, and there is normal lines from north and south. This is also part of the great circle. And there is a straight line from east to west. So this is east, this is the west. This is also part of the great circle. And there are a set of great circles from north and south. Okay? So there are a set of big uh, great circles drawn in this ulfness. And from here to here, now you rotate about 10 degrees, okay, from perpendicular lines. Now, the, these perpendicular lines, now you rotate 90 degrees. Now, if you rotate 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, 40 degrees, then there is a set of lines, great circles, drawn from the north and south. And now, this one set of line from this is 10 degrees, and then there is a five lines, so each line designates two degree rotations. So ULFNET has whole series of great circle information in here as a longitudinal lines. And also there is information about the small circles. For instance, from east and west, now if you go in here, there is a part of the lines, and this line does not passing through the center of the sphere, so this is the part of the small circle, okay? And this small circle is from center of the sphere. You move 10 degrees, 20 degrees, and, and then there is a series of small circles represented in this ulfness, okay? So this is small circles. And again, this small circle is represented by the two degree intervals in between the 10 degrees, okay? So ULFNET is drawn to two degree intervals as a set of longitudinal lines, great circles, and set of small circles as a latitude lines. So if you have any stereo projection information, okay? So there is any poles in here, then if you wanted to measure, manipulate 
you want to get any information from this uh, strip projection, then you, do have, you should have the same size wolfness, same size wolfness, and as a, as a series of gray circles and as a series of small circles. Then you put those wolfness on this uh, strip projection. Now you manipulate it, then you can get the information of this, the relationship between the poles and how to rotate the poles with respect to certain poles or certain directions. Okay, so strap projection. Now in order to get the information, there is a good method to get the information from here. This is what we call ULPNET, and ULPNET contains the information about the gray circles and small circles. But you should have the same size of ULPNET with the strap projection that you would like to get the information. Okay, now let me tell you about what I'm talking about. If you have ULPNET, and if you have a strap projection, then the first thing you can do, you can get the information by using ULPNET, is you can get the angle between the two crystal planes. And in this case, you can measure angles if and only if the projected poles lie on a great circle. Okay, what I mean is this. Okay, in the in any textbooks or any papers, you get this uh, strip projection information. So now there is certain poles P1 and certain poles P2 and certain poles P3. Now you want to get the angle information between each of these poles. Okay. So what you do is you get the same size of ULPNET. Okay. So ULPNET maybe you can get the ULPNET like this with this information in here, right? Then by using this ULPNET, you move around on this uh, strip projection and put those two poles on a great circle, okay? For instance, if I have this A pole and B pole in the strip projection, okay? Basically, you have these two poles in here, then you put the ULPNET on there and you rotate it and put those two poles, A pole and B pole, on a great circle. Okay? In this case, now this two pole lies on a great circle because east and west line is part of the great circle. And from here, you can measure okay, the angle by using ULPNET 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, Okay, now the angle between these two poles is 120 degrees. Okay, now if I have any two poles in here, then what you do is you move around this ULPNET on top of these strip projections and put these two poles on a great circle. Then you can measure the angle. In here, E and F lies on this N as lines. So it lies on a gray circle, so you can measure the angle between these two poles. Now this C pole and D pole, if you move your strip projection, and in this case, this C pole and D pole lies on these lines, which is part of the great circle. So now you can measure the angle between these two poles. Okay, so this is 20 degrees, right? So if you have a strip projection, then you're using ULPNETs, then you put those, the same size of ULPNET with the size of a strip projection. Then you move around your ULPNET and put those two poles, which you would like to measure the angle, on a great circle. Then you can measure the angle by using ULPNET. All right. Also, another uh, way that uh, you, we can use this ULPNET is we find out the trace of a plane. What I mean is, if I have certain planes, then I designate this plane as a pole. Then I want to know all the directions which lies on this plane. Of course, all these line directions has the 90 degree angle separations. So all these lines in any directions has the 90 degree angle from this pole. So what we do is, okay, we have, let's say, this P2 pole. P2 
p2 prime 4. Okay. Now, all right, this is basically the information that there is a stereophilic projection, there is a certain pole P2 in here, and I wanted to know all the directions which lies on this uh, plane which makes this P2 pole. Then what you do is you using the Ulfness on top of this and you move around and you put this P2 pole on the equatorial lines, okay? In here, for instance, this P2 prime pole is in here. You move around the Ulfness and you put this P2 pole on the east and west, All right? In here, you can measure 1, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, okay? So this point has the angle between this P2 pole of 90 degrees, okay? And because you put your pole on the east and west lines, then there is a, uh, and you find out this pole, uh, this direction, which is 90 degree angle separation from this pole, then this point is located on part of the big circle in here, okay? Then any point in this great circle, any point in this great circle has the separation angle of 90 degree. Okay, what I mean is this P2 pole and this D1 direction and D2 direction, D3 direction, D4 direction, any directions on this gray circle has the 90 degree angle with this P2 pole. Okay, so how you measure it? Of course, you move around and you put this two pole on a part of the gray circle. Okay, then you can measure the angle in here. Then you will find out that indeed, all the directions which is located on these lines has the angle separation of 90 degree from this P2 prime poles. Okay, so that's another way of utilizing your Ulfness uh, on your stereophilic projection.